the next one says, if y varies inversely as x and y equals 4 when x equals 5. So whenever you see varies inversely, that's when you have k over. So it's y equals k over x. So y equals 4 when, k, when x equals 5. So 4 equals k over 5. So what's k? 20. 20. So our, my inverse variation function is y equals 20 over x. So that's what that is. Okay, well, let's sketch the graph. So 20 over x, it's not going to look like that downward sloping line that we had. Do a t-table. If I plug in x equals 1, I get 20 over 1, so 20. If I plug in 4, I get 5, right? 20 over 4 is 5. If I plug in 5, I get 4. So I'm going to have 120. It's going to be way up there. I'm going to have 4, 5. I could also have 210. Is that what someone was saying? So 210 is like right there. Oh, I did 3, 5, didn't I? Go over one more. 4, 5, 210. 5, 4. And then if you plug in 20, you get 20, comma 1. So that's way down there. So do you guys see how it's not crossing the axes? It's just going right along it like that, like the rational functions we've been doing. Why would you not get x equals 0 or y equals 0? So see how if you plug in 0 for x, 20 over 0 is undefined. So that's why it's not crossing uh, here. Okay, if you plug in any number, you're not going to get 0 out. So you have 20 over something, you're never going to get 0. Yeah, Jess? Yeah, that's why it's going right along there. It's never going to cross it. Yep, and you could, you could go through all the steps of finding the vertical asymptote, the horizontal. Your vertical would be x equals 0. Set your denominator equal to 0. That's why it's here. Your horizontal would be degree 1, so 0 over 1, which is 0. So that's here. Okay, what about on the other side, though? So plug in negatives. If I plug in negative 4, I get negative 5 out. If I plug in negative 5, I get negative 4. It's going to look this way. So you can graph that one as well. Okay. Okay, joint variation. So this is um, a relationship between three variables, x, y, and z, that can be written in the form y equals k times x times z. Okay, so all of them are directly related. So they're all on the same line. We don't have any divided bys. Okay, so here's an example of that. So it says the cost C of printing a magazine is jointly proportional to the number of pages P in the magazine and the number of magazines printed M. Write an equation that expresses this joint variation. So it's jointly related. So C is jointly related. So you always have a constant. So K times P times M. So find the constant if the cost is $60,000, 4,000 copies of a 120-page magazine. So that's my P, and this is my M. So you're going to have 6, 60,000 divided by 120 times 4,000. Now be careful putting this into your calculator. If you put it all at once, you need parentheses. So you're dividing by that whole denominator. Okay, I taught you the zero trick. If you're dividing by 10 on the top and bottom, cross out zeros. 100, 1,000. There's actually a 10 with a 12 as well. So you're going to have 6 divided by 48. So k is equal to 0.125 or 1 eighth. Okay, that's your constant of proportionality. Okay, think about what that represents. So if I have a total cost of $60,000, each page of the 4,000 copies, do you guys see what the 0.125 is? Okay, that's the cost per page. So it's costing like 12.5 cents to, make e to print each page. So like 12.5 cents for a color copy or something. Okay, so that's how much it's costing this magazine per page. 
So you can write cost per page if you want. Okay, so how much would the printing cost be for 5,000 copies? So that's M and P is 92. So my cost would be that constant is still the same, 0.125 times P times M. So it's 0.125 times 92 times 5,000 equals my total cost. So it works out to be 57,500. When did you guys get out? Dang, not that happened so fast. My last class I got out. Okay, let's do this last one real quick. It's quick. All right, relationship among three variables, x, y, and z, that contains both direct and inverse variation. So if y varies directly as x, you'd have k times x. And inversely as z, you'd have divided by z. So it could be lots of different combinations of this. So it might say inversely as one and directly as another. So it says the resistance R of a wire varies directly as the length and inversely, so that means it's on the bottom, as the square of its diameter D. So it would be over D squared. That's how you would write that one. So you can have different combinations of those as well. All right, I have homework for you guys, so don't run out yet. So your 9.3 is due tomorrow.